<laughs> okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Peter's Episcopal Church in Medford, New Jersey. My name is uh, Reverend Valerie Balling, and I'm joined by our deacon, uh, Helen Orlando, and um, Bob Lignani, who's the interim priest at uh, Christ Church Finchintown, and our deacon intern, Bruce Cicchini. We're all practicing social distancing by being at our own homes, uh, except for me. I could walk over here, so it's not too bad. Um, and we're offering uh, the Liturgy of the Word for uh, Monday and Holy Week. Uh, hopefully you have a copy of the bulletin that's been sent out. Uh, it's also available on our website if you would like it. So we begin with our penitence order. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God have mercy, mercy and forever. 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 If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Mute. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that, we have, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We, we have, have not loved you with our whole heart. We you have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry for every humble reason. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins to the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, to strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that we who celebrate with awe the Paschal Feast may be found worthy to attain to everlasting joys through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the multitude. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power and wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul in Hades, or let the Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently that our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. For seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 16, I invite you to say this, recite this yourselves, but turn off your mic so that we don't get, it's not too garbled. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, 
nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus met Mary Magdalene and the other Mary and said greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While they were going, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests everything that had happened. After the priests had assembled with the elders, they devised a plan to give a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, You must say, His disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story is told among the Jews to this day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. All right, I just realized I did a huge mistake. <laughs> My apologies. Um, somehow the readings that we just read were from uh, Easter week and not Holy Week. I don't know how I made that mistake. Okay. The correct gospel is from John. <laughs> I thought that was odd. Yeah, it was. It's very odd. It's from J John. And this is the one that I actually prepared my re reflection on. So my, uh, but it's been a week. Six, uh, chapter 12 of John verses one through 11. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served and Lazarus was one at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 3,000 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put in it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom they had raised from the dead. So the chief priest planted, planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on the account of him that many Jews were discerning and were believing in Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray for the church and for the world. <laughs> No, <laughs> I still have a sermon to do. <laughs> oh, sorry, it doesn't say it here. Uh, oh, I don't mind. It's been, it's been a week. So here we are at the beginning of Holy Week, well, the second day of Holy Week after Palm Sunday. And we have this lovely, this lovely image of Jesus being at home uh, with um, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Uh, two weeks ago, we heard uh, the um, account of Lazarus's resuscitation and how John foreshadows Mary's uh, devotion in this scene. And uh, it's, uh, it's such an important uh, um, part of the narrative of the story that John offers us. Uh, we have to remember that it is in John's gospel that says Jesus came to um, have life and to have it abundantly. And I think that in this time when we've kind of been all had to have such contrition in our lives, it's interesting to think about what abundant life means to us. How do we live abundantly when scarcity seems to be the rule of the day? When the only thing that seems to be more abundant than we're used to is time. We're used to having not enough time to do all the stuff that we want to accomplish and all the things that we want to do. And yet here we have so much time on our hands that we get bored so easily. 
And so I think as we move forward in our Lenten uh, uh, fast and in our Holy Week journey, it's a, a good time for us to consider what does it mean to have abundant life? In all of the technology that we have right now, the one thing that we're still not able to do uh, effectively or well, and perhaps uh, it's not the best thing to do, but it's something to consider is smell o vision Because I think that uh, we know that our olfactory sense senses offer us um, such, a, such an, an awesome and welcome um, uh, connection to our memory. So stop for a moment and consider what your favorite smell is. What is it that when you smell it, you immediately are transported somewhere else? And for a moment, uh, you're just filled with a sense of well being. For me, that smell is wood smoke. It reminds me immediately of when uh, my family would go camping when I was a kid and how we used to snuggle up next to a fire. And um, it was awesome to, uh, to just be kind of still and quiet and where nothing was important but being uh, present uh, uh, with each other in that moment watching the fire. Uh, I, now that I live in Medford, there's actually a lot of homes that have wood smoke uh, heat, heating in their, in their homes. Not that we need it all that much this summer but, or, or this winter, um, but uh, when I would smell it, it would just transport me immediately to that sense of home and security. So I think it's important for us to, for a moment to imagine what it would be like in that space, in that place where Mary was anointing Jesus's feet with nard. We probably can't understand what nard smells like. It's a rather specific smell um, and not one that we are very familiar with being in the United States. It's much more of a Middle Eastern smell, um, but it's very, it's very consuming and very um, wondrous. And it, it just, it brings about that spice. And for me, it's almost a mystical, magical sense. To be in a place where the only thing that was important in that moment was to share Mary's devotion to Jesus. Mary who, had already made that choice over and over again to be at Jesus's feet, to know that that was the only thing that was important at that time and in that moment. To, to smell and to offer her worship for her God, her King, her Savior. To even wipe the feet of Jesus with her own hair such devotion and sense of wanting to offer herself in pure service and love. And of course, her actions are counterpointed by what Judas Iscariot does, where his concern seems to be like what Christians should be about, the poor and the, uh, those who don't have as much. And yet his sense of of wanting to offer righteousness, um, actually, we're told, dismisses the devotion that Mary shows is what the right action should be. So while we're cooped up as we have to be uh, in our homes with our families or others, uh, even the pets or whatever, um, where we're desiring so much to want to do and we're being told no, I think that's a helpful reminder for us that sometimes doing isn't what we need to do. We just need to be. We just need to be with Jesus. In this difficult, itchy time when we want to offer ourselves so much, sometimes we just need to be. We just need to be with Mary at Jesus' feet knowing that there's nothing we can do that will stop what his ultimate uh, sacrifice will be. And yet we honor that through our devotion, recognize that through his actions, we're redeemed. 
as painful and as hard as that is. So we join with Mary in that place that smells so wondrous and mysterious. Offer our tears and our hair to clean the feet of our beloved Lord. And in that moment, we can just be and know how deeply, how extremely, how abundantly we are loved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. For the holy church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for William, our bishop, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that your divisions may cease, and that all may be as one, as, as one as you and the Father are one. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who live and work in this community, especially all healthcare workers, first responders, essential workers who put themselves in danger, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, especially from COVID-19. For refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this congregation, we spread apart as we spread apart as we are that we may be delivered from the hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but eternal life, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. So friends, that concludes our worship for today, as messed up as it was. <laughs> I apologize. We will have the correct readings for tomorrow's liturgy, and I uh, hope you'll join us then. Until then, God bless and uh, live abundantly. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye Mark. Mark. We'll see you tomorrow.
Um, so I will double check the readings and make sure that we have the correct reading for tomorrow. My apologies. I don't know what happened with that. Um, I, think pretty, I think we're pretty good for tomorrow. Okay. I, uh, I just want to... I'm doing so many bulletins. I think I just messed up that time. I just wanted to say that your sermon transported me to that to that room. Yeah. That fragrance is great. That's Thank great. you. Appreciate that. Yeah, good sermon, Valerie. Thank you so much. <laughs> if everything else was messed up, at least that made sense. No, that was I got to record that was really it. <laughs> at least you prepared the sermon for the right reading. Even I did. We, <laughs> we got two gospels, so. And yeah. she got to give it, even Yay. though I cut it off. I staple my papers together, and the part that the sermon was under the staple. <laughs> so you saw me ripping my papers apart. Well, Can I, I ask a practical question just?